with the creation of the rings and a little more about these three rings and not the ridiculousness we just saw. If you get the book, The Silmarillion, this is within the book of that title of the rings and of the third age. But the elves were not so likely to be caught because they weren't stupid. As soon as Sauron set the one ring upon his finger, they were aware of him and they knew him and perceived that he would be master of them and all that they wrought. Then in anger and fear, they took off their rings. But he, finding that he was betrayed and that the elves were not deceived, was filled with wrath. Because in this version, the elves are not deceived. And he came against them with open war, demanding that all the rings should be delivered to him, since the elven smiths could not have attained to their making without his lore and counsel. <laughs> and they're all like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're just going to do what you tell us to do. Or in Tolkien's words, but the elves fled from him and three of their rings they saved and bore them away and hid them. Because there were a whole bunch of rings. Now, these were the three that had last been made and they possessed the greatest powers. The rings of fire and of water and of air set with ruby and adamant and sapphire. And all of the elven rings Sauron most desired to possess them, for those who had them in their keeping could ward off the decays of time and postpone the weariness of the world. In the show, they were just like, we're going to just create three rings. It's like, no, there were lots of them. But Sauron could not discover them, for they were given into the hands of the wise. That's another thing. The hands of the wise aren't always the characters that we're seeing on this show, this version of Tolkien, because my goodness gracious, in the rings of power, they are anything but wise. The wise who concealed them and never again used them openly while Sauron kept the ruling ring. Therefore, and when there's a therefore, you ask what it's there for, the three remained unsullied, for they were forged by Celebrimbor alone. And the hand of Sauron had never touched them. Yet, they were also subject to the one. From that time, war never ceased between Sauron and the elves. And Eregion was laid waste, and Celebrimbor slain, and the doors of Moria were shut. In that time, the stronghold and refuge of Imladris that men called Rivendale was founded by Elrond half-elven, and long it endured. But Sauron gathered into his hands all the remaining rings of power, and he dealt them out to the other peoples of Middle-earth, hoping thus to bring under his sway all those that desired secret power beyond the measure of their kind. Seven rings he gave to the dwarves, but to men he gave nine, for men proved in this matter, as in others, the readiest to his will. In all those rings that he governed, he perverted the more easily since he had a part in their making and they were accursed and they betrayed in the end all those who used them. The dwarves indeed proved tough and hard to tame. They ill endure the domination of others and the thoughts of their hearts are hard to fathom, nor can they be turned to shadows. So when you see that the dwarves were not necessarily subject to the ring, that's to what they were referring to. That's that. Yeah, it says, now the elves made many rings. Please, in the comments, tell me what I got right. Tell me what I got wrong and I may have left out. Have a great day, everyone. Have a great day and be certain, be certain to read the story that Tolkien wrote.